Lord Gorin. Good evening, my dear Arthur. Mrs. Cheveley, allow me to introduce to you Lord Goring, the idlest man in London. I have met Lord Goring before. I didn't think you would remember, Mrs. Cheveley. My memory is under admirable control. And are you still a bachelor? I believe so. A very romantic. Oh, no, 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 I'm not at all romantic. I'm not old enough. I leave romance to my seniors. <laughs> By the way, Mrs. Cheveley, are you staying in London long? Well, that depends partly on the weather, partly on the cooking. And partly on Sir Robert. You're not going to plunge us into a European war, I hope. <laughs> oh, there's no danger at present. <laughs> Brigadier Sir George Green and Lady Green. You're very late. Have you missed me? Awfully. Oh, I wish I'd stayed away longer. I love being missed. How very selfish of you. Yes, I am very selfish. You're always telling me of your bad qualities, Lord Gordon. I've only told you half of them as yet, Miss Mabel. Are the others very bad? Oh, quite dreadful. When I think of them at night, I go to sleep at once. Well, I delight in your bad qualities. I wouldn't have you part with one of them. Oh, how very nice of you. <laughs> By the way, I want to ask you a question. Yes? Who brought Mrs. Cheveley here? Oh, I, uh, I think Lady Markby brought her. Why'd you ask? I haven't seen her for years, that's all. What an absurd reason. <laughs> all reasons are absurd. Uh, what sort of woman is she? Hmm. She's a genius in the daytime and a beauty at night. I dislike her already. <laughs> that shows your admirable good taste. His Grace, the Bishop of Norwich. Mademoiselle, uh, may I have the pleasure of escorting you to the music room? Delighted, Vicon, quite delighted. Aren't you coming to the music room? Not if there's any music going on. The music is in German. You wouldn't understand it. Well, sir, what are you doing here? Wasting your life as usual? Can't make out how you put up with London society. This whole thing's gone to the dogs. A lot of nobodies talking about nothing. Oh, I love talking about nothing, Father. It's the only thing I know anything about. Ah, Lady Basildon and Mrs. Marchmont. Are you here? I had no idea you were coming to political Oh, I adore political parties. They're the only place left to us where nobody talks politics. I see Lord Goring is in the camp of the enemy as usual. I saw him talking to that Mrs. Cheverley when he came in. Handsome woman, Mrs. Cheverley. Please, don't praise other women in our presence. You might wait for us to do this. I did wait. Well, we are not going to praise her. I hear she went to the opera on Monday, and she told Tommy Trafford at supper that as far as she could see, London society was entirely made up of dowdies and dandies. She's quite right, of course. The men are all dowdies, and the ladies are all dandies, aren't they? Um, do you think that is really what Mrs. Cheveley meant? Of course. And a very sensible remark of Mrs. Cheveley to make. Why are you talking about Mrs. Cheveley? Everybody's talking about Mrs. Cheveley. Lord Goring says, what was it you said, Lord Goring, about Mrs. Cheveley? Oh, yes, I remember that she's a genius in the daytime and a beauty at night. Oh, what a horrid combination. So terribly unnatural. I like looking at geniuses and listening to beautiful people. How very morbid of you, Mrs. Marchmont. Uh, is it morbid to have a desire for food? I have a great desire for food, Lord Goring. Will you give me some supper? With pleasure, Miss Mabel. Excuse me, why? Excuse me. How horrid you've been. You've never talked to me the whole evening. How could I? You ran off with a French child diplomat. Well, you might have followed us. Pursuit would have been only polite. I, uh, I don't think I like you at all this evening. I like you immensely. Well, I wish you'd show it in a more marked way.